Hey everybody, it's Sean Waters. It is Thursday, January 28th, um, less than a week away from the launching of the first Wisdom Workshop that I'm hosting. I'm super excited about. Um, I am an instructor of philosophy and composition for about 11 years and a kind of an enthusiast about philosophy as an art of practical living and philosophical skills and philosophical tools, which you're gonna outline throughout the course of this channel and um, the work with the Wisdom Workshop. So I wanted to introduce what we're doing or how I'm thinking about what we're doing and give you an exercise to kind of start and go along with us if you don't wanna join an actual physical remote workshop with the real people, is to introduce you to my journey as a thinker and a philosopher, which really started when I was 15 or 16 with this book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And it is actually this book that I read on vacation in uh, Maine on a lake in the upper northwest, northeast uh, of the country. Um, it was really a transformative moment for me in thinking and approaching philosophy. So what is philosophy? That's the question here. Um, this is, this book is electrifying, one of the most profoundly important bestsellers of our time, The Fabulous Journey of a Man in Search of Himself. The idea of searching for who we are. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, subtitle, An Inquiry into Values. And the question that makes this book so interesting is a question about quality and what makes a quality human life. I think in large part, we each have to answer that question and our lives in some ways are are an answer to that question, as Robert Persig explores in this book. Um, Josh Waitzkin, uh, who wrote The Art of Learning, an amazing, brilliant mind, chess master and tai chi master, says that it's really about finding the art or the ability to find the art in everything. The art of motorcycle maintenance, the art of um, anything that we do, any art where we're able to put our whole selves into it. Uh, so the question really is, what is a quality existence? And that is a question we each have to answer on our own. And it's a question that is worth exploring by making things, in my esteemed opinion. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit of this to give us an idea. There's an entire, this is from chapter 18, page 190, there's an entire branch of philosophy concerned with the definition of quality, known as aesthetics. Its question, what is meant by beautiful, goes back to antiquity. But when he was a student of philosophy, Phaedrus had recoiled violently from this entire branch of knowledge. He had almost deliberately failed the one course in it he had attended and had written a number of papers subjecting the instructor and the materials to outrageous attack. He hated and reviled everything. It wasn't any particular aesthetician who produced this reaction in him. It was all of them. It wasn't any particular point of view that outraged him so much as the idea that quality, capital Q, should be subordinated to any point of view. The intellectual, the intellectual process was forcing quality, capital Q, into its servitude, prostituting it. I think that was the source of his anger. He wrote in one paper, these aestheticians think their subject is some kind of peppermint bonbon they're entitled to smack their fat lips on. Something to be devoured, something to be intellectually knifed, forked, and spooned up bit by bit with appropriate, delicate remarks, and I'm ready to throw up. What they smack their lips on is the putrescence of something they have long ago killed. Uh, back a little bit. The idea here to even describe or capture what quality is, capital Q, is to do somewhat of an injustice to it, which really opens the question, what is it really? And back to 163, quality, and this is the prompt. Quality, you know what it is, yet you don't know what it is. But that's self-contradictory. But some things are better than others. That is, they have more quality. 
But when you try to say what the quality is, apart from the things that have it, it all goes poof. There's nothing to talk about. But if you can't say what quality is, how do you know what it is? Or how do you know that it even exists? If no one knows what it is, then for all practical purposes, it doesn't exist at all. But for all practical purposes, it really does exist. What else are the grades based on? Would people, why else would people pay fortunes for some things and throw others in the trash pile? Obviously, some things are better than others, but what is the betterness? So round and round you go, spinning mental wheels and nowhere finding it any place to get traction. What the hell is quality? What is it? End of part two of the book. Do we see why this question is compelling? Um, the beginning of our journey really starts with this question. What does it mean to live a quality life for us in our circumstances, in our relationships, in our contexts, in our fields, in our lives, in our loves, in our inner dialogue, in our minds, in the application of our emotional and intellectual patterns and daily architecture? Um, one way to get at this question is what is a quality human being? That's where we're gonna start. I'm gonna ask you to identify in the first week the kinds of people that are inspiring to you, mentors in a sense, and why. What is it about them that you deem to be quality? Um, if you wanna join us, um, continue to follow along, share, subscribe, someone you wanna have this conversation with. Uh, interestingly, this also applies to the disciplines and the arts as well. That was my initial kind of easy answer to this question in some way, is that quality is whatever is measured, is what, however something meets the standards that are set by the thing itself. So um, what is a quality apple? As a apple that is really good at being an apple. What is a quality human being? It's a human being that is good at being a human being. What is a quality dog in a dog show that wins first prize in the dog show? It's the dog that most accurately meets the standards set up by the dog showing commission. And I'm talking a little bit in circles here, but that's what's interesting to me about this question and why this book really kind of got me started on this whole journey that's now taking the place of formal workshops where we work to identify what we mean by quality life and how we can live that life for a 40-day sprint. Um, that's the goal. A uh, little bit more about the workshops if you're still watching and still want to help. They are seven weeks long. Uh, you get to choose the projects that you're working on and define what those projects are based on the ideals and goals that you have. There are some key touchstone basic learning habits and wisdom habits, which I think are philosophy skills, practical philosophy that we go over, and that's non-evaluative, non-reactive awareness of mindfulness and different modes of mindfulness, moving meditation, and um, focus, insight, concentration, meditation. That's one big mental skill. Writing and journaling, doing post-mortem analyses of days and projects is another big one. And then kind of allowing yourself to be creative and generative at the front end every morning, so to speak, um, is another key part of this process. We also really, I'm excited about this model because it, I'm really want to see the propensity or possibility for this to bring people together that wouldn't ordinarily come together and to form relationships, alumni networks of like-minded people who are actively involved and engaged in this question of how do I live a better life. Um, a big part of that is reading and understanding and seeing things from different perspectives. And that's why I'm suggesting Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance as a first read on your philosophical journey and kind of the big questions of this text as framing really my entire adult enterprise from the time when I was 15 or 16 to try to figure out what the best possible life I could live is and what that would look like and how I can, what small things I can do on a day-to-day -day basis, the ways I can treat my experience, understand my experience, parent, father, mother, my experience and my learning. Um, is really the question I want to engage in with more people. So if you're into that question, you'd probably be in to 
hanging out with us and um, getting some formal structure and serious accountability on stepping up as a human being, whatever human being you deem is the most quality version of yourself. All right, thank you very much, um, Sean Waters. Like, subscribe. I hope this helps. Uh, sending you all good vibes.